Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about problem set 1, Mario Less of CS50 course. So basically in this problem we're going to build a pyramid similar to this one we're seeing here, where we have some empty spaces in front and we have some hashes in the right part. So here we have to follow some steps in order to make it and this video will cover all the idea of how can you solve this. One thing that is important to notice is that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have an alternative view about the problem. We totally disencourage plagiarism. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So let's start. The first thing we have to be aware of is that before we're working with creating this pyramid in here, this pattern, we have to check if we are receiving the correct input from the user. So basically in here, if you take a look, let me scroll down a little bit. If you take a look, here they mention that we have to accept only positive integers between 1 and 8 inclusive. So if the user type in 1, we're gonna accept 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7 or 8, we will accept. If it's a negative number or 0, we will prompt the user again asking for a height. Or if it's greater than 8, for example 9, 20, we're gonna avoid this number and we're gonna ask the user again as well, all right? So first we need to get the height. So let's see these patterns that we have in here. If the user type in three, we have to create this pyramid where we have three rows. If we have height eight, we have to create this pyramid where we have eight rows. Two, it's gonna have two rows. And for example, if we type, if the user type in minus one, we're gonna reprompt the user. If the user type in zero, we're gonna reprompt the user. 42 reprompt, 50 reprompt until the user give us the correct value. So for example, in here, the user is giving us four. So we're printing four rows for our pyramid. Okay, now, you should have already uh, created here your environment. If not, you can see our video solution where our video where we explain how can you set up the environment for CS50. And this is our Visual Studio code. In the top of the page in here of the CS50 requirement, you have to follow these steps. So you can copy and paste this wget, so on, unzip, rm, and then you're gonna have the folder with this file called Mario Less. Okay, so let's start working with C in here. I'm gonna create a variable here that will be called height. Okay, so it will be an integer, height. And then we're gonna use a do while loop. If you remember from the lecture, we can use multiple types of loops, but this do while loop is really important for us in this case because we're gonna do some part of the code, we're gonna do some things while our expression is true. Once our expression is false, we won't be doing this anymore. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna ask the user for a height. So I'm gonna here, I'm gonna say height equals. And if you remember from the lecture, how can we get the, the input? Uh, how can we prompt the user for something? We can use the get int function that is inside of our CS50 library. So here I'm gonna say get int and I wanna ask for the height, okay? Then we need to set what is our condition. So I wanna ask the user for this, uh, for the height, while we don't have the correct number for height. So here, while height is less than or equals to zero, remember that we only want numbers between one and eight inclusive, or height is greater than eight. Okay, so this is our test in here. So let's check. If I do here make Mario and then I do dot forward slash Mario, it's gonna ask us for height. If I put here minus one, it's asking us again because minus one is a number that is less than one. If I put here nine, for example, nine is greater than eight, so it's asking us again. What if I put a hundred? It will ask us the user again because here we're gonna do this block of get int while we're not satisfying this, this condition. What if I put the number four? Four is a number that is in the range of one and eight and we should be done with that. So if I put here, enter we're done with our do while loop and then we're satisfying the first part of our code so this is it now let's start thinking about how can we create the pattern for our pyramid 
So now we need to think about how can we create the pattern. So let's suppose we have this example here where height is equals to 5. Here we're seeing that we're only seeing the right part of our pyramid. We can't see the left part because in the left part we have the empty spaces. So let's put this pyramid in a table. Let's suppose that we have here this table where we have 5 columns and 5 rows. Now, instead of letting these empty spaces, let's put some dots instead. Here, as we can see, in the first row, we have four dots and one hash. In the second row, we have three dots and two hashes. In the third row, we have two dots and three hashes. In the fourth row, we have one dot and four hashes. And in the last row, we have no dots and five hashes. So if you take a look, the number of the row that we are, it's how many hashes we're going to print out. And as we can see, as long as, as we are going in our table from the first row to the last one, the number of hashes are increasing and the number of dots, our white spaces, are decreasing. So we have to find a row to understand how it works. Now let's analyze the first row only and see if we find a formula to print out the, the dots and the hashes. One thing that is important to notice, every time we're working with programming, we always start counting at zero. So the first row we're going to be calling is at zero and the last row, since we're starting at zero and our height is five, it's going to be zero, one, two, three and four. OK, so let's analyze the first row that it's our I equals to zero and our columns will be called J. When i is equal to 0 in the first row, we can take a look at j equals to 0. And here in this position, we have a dot. Then when we have i equals to 0 and j equals to 1, we have a dot again. Then i equals to 0 and j equals to 2, we have another dot. Then we have i equals to 0, j equals to 3, another dot. And finally, we find a hash when our i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 4. So what we can observe about this? Our height has value 5. The only moment where we have a hash is when our j is equal to 4 and our i is equal to 0. The other scenarios, we can't see this. So what if we see that the observation when we are summing i plus j? So in the first scenario, we have i equals to 0 and j equals to 0. i plus j is equals to 0 and 0 is less than 4, that it's height minus 1. For i equals to 1 and j, for i equals to 0 and j equals to 1, we have here 0 plus 1 equals to 1 and 1 is less than 4. Then we have i equals to 0, j equals to 2, that is equals to 2 and 2 is less than 4 and so on until we have here this part where we have the hash that it's i equals to 0 and j equals to 4. 0 plus 4 is 4 and 4 is equals to our height minus 1. So we can kind of see this formula starting out. Now let's see the second row. What if in here now the second row i is equals to 1? So i equals to 1 is 1 and j equals to 0 it's so i plus j is 1 and 1 is less than 4. Then i equals to 1, j equals to 1, we have 2 and 2 is less than 4. i equals to 1, j equals to 2, it's 3 and 3 is less than 4. And notice that when we have i equals to 1 and j equals to 3, the sum is 4, we have a hash. So this kind of respects our formula that we notice. And then when we have i equals to 1 and j equals to 4, that it's 5, when we sum them, we also have a hash. So we can start seeing that in here, this might be our way to calculate when we're going to print out this, the dots and when we're going to print out the hashes, okay? This will be our main formula. If i plus j is less than n minus 1, we're going to print a dot. If i plus j is greater than or equals to, I, to height minus 1, we're going to print out a hash. Okay, so let's save this formula to use in the future. Now that we saw this pattern of printing the hashes, how can we put this into code? We're going to start working with nested loops. Let's remember that table that we were seeing before where we have the rows and the columns. And again, we're working with that example where the height is 5. Okay, so if we're working with nested loops, we need to loop through the rows and the columns in order to display or the dot or the hash because now we know that depending on which row and which column we are we're gonna print out something different correct so how can we loop first 
in the rows. We can do our for loop looping from 0 to 5, that is our height. And this way we're gonna loop from 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. This is our i. Then, if we want to loop through the rows, we need to do a for loop inside this for loop of the i. Because this for loop of the i will do the following. First, we're going to loop over the first row, the row 0, and then we're going to check in this row 0 all of the five columns we have inside. Once we finish looping through these columns, we're going to go to the next row and loop for all the other columns again, and so on. So this is pretty good because we can check each square we have here in our table in this table where we have the rows and the columns. So our first for loop will loop from zero to the height and then our second for loop will loop again from zero to the height because we are in a square. We have both i and j going from zero to four, okay? And then instead of our for loop, we're going to do an if statement checking exactly that golden formula we found. If i plus j is less than the height minus one, we're gonna display the dot. If i plus j is greater or equals to our n minus one, that is our height minus one, we're gonna display the hash. And then by the end, since we wanna print the rows and the columns, we're gonna go to the next line. So we need to force our print to go to the next line, okay? So how can we convert this that I just said and you saw here in the screen, in this, this animation, into words? So let's see here in our code. So, so far we have here our do while loop, okay? And now we're gonna start doing our nested for loop. So here I'm gonna do for int i equals to zero. And as I mentioned, we're gonna start from zero to the value of our height, i less than height, i plus plus. This is our first for loop to loop through the rows. And now we're gonna do a second for loop inside to loop through the columns. Let me shrink this part and expand in here. And then I'm gonna do for int j equals to zero. And again, since it's a square, we're gonna loop through from zero to our height again. j less than height and j plus plus. All right, once we have this, now we need to use our golden formula as I mentioned. So we're gonna do an if and else statement. So here, if i plus j is less than height minus one, we're gonna print out our dot. Oops, print f our dot. Else, we're gonna print f our hash. In the future, we will remove this dot, but right now I wanna show you what is going on, okay? And finally, as I mentioned, this for loop here will print out all the hashes and dots we have in the first row. Then we need to go to the next row and do all over again. So after our inner for loop, we're going to do a print f and we're gonna go to the next line. So backslash n. Okay, let's see if it's working. We probably have some bugs, but it's okay. So here make Mario and here dot for slash Mario. And let's test again if the first part is working. So if I put minus one, it's asking us again, nine, it's asking us again. But I, what if I put five? And here in five, let me expand here, let me zoom in and we can see what is going on. So here, when we have height five, we're doing here four dots and one hash, like we are expecting. Then three dots, two hashes. Two dots, three hashes, one dot, four hashes, and finally zero dots and five hashes. Okay, so here we have our pattern. The only thing we need to fix to be exactly what we're expecting is instead of having a dot, we're gonna put a space, a white space. So let me make Mario again and run our code. If I put five again, now we have exactly the same pattern. If this is still too complicated, let's use the debugger and I believe this will fix all of the issues you might be having right now to understand. So well, now let's see how the debugger works. If you have never worked with debug before, I highly recommend you using from now on because sometimes when we're coding, we don't know where is actually the problem we're facing. So sometimes we can use print, sometimes we can use other methods, but using the debugger is really good because you can actually see what is going on, what is being executed line by line. So let's start doing this. How can you use the debugger? 
CS50 has this his own debugger for C, okay, so you, what you just need to do. Here, right next to the number of the line, you, there it will be appearing here this, uh, this red dot, and you just need to click in here, for example, I'm gonna put on line 6, I wanna read my code from the beginning. Then, this, this is how we call breakpoint, and this breakpoint we can see what is going on, and we're gonna start seeing our code from our line 6. Then you need to do debug 50 and the name of the file you want to check. Then if I click enter, it will take us some time because it's reading our code and seeing what is going on. And let me shrink this part so we can see. Here, as we can see, we are on line 8, okay? The line that is highlighted is the line that we are currently are. We're not, we didn't read this line yet, but we're gonna read after we click here this curly arrow okay right now we have our line six where we're creating our variable height and if we take a look in here we we are only have height and the value of height right now is zero then we're inside of this do while loop so here it's asking us the get int uh, function the height that we were gonna use so here if i use step over it's gonna ask us height if i put minus one it will be here height is equals to minus one and now we're on line 10. So now our code will check if height is less than zero or greater than eight. Since minus ones is less than zero, we're gonna reprompt the user here in our line eight. So here, as you can see, we're back to line eight. So this is what the do while loop does. We're gonna do something and then we're gonna check if this something is letting our condition true or false. So here we're gonna be asked again, and if I put 10, for example, uh, our while here will check if height is greater than eight. Since 10 is greater than eight, and here you can see height is equal to 10, we're gonna reprompt the user. And then if I put here, for example, now we're gonna ask the user again, if I put here the number four, now it will check here our height has a new value four, and since 4 is not less than or equal to 0 or greater than 8, we will get out of our while. So now we're going to start our line 12. In our line 12, we're going to do our nested for loop. So I will be the row. And if you take a look, once I click here, step over, we have here i equals to 0. Okay, so we have our variable i. So the first in the first loop, i will be 0. Then we're going to start our second loop and we're going to start j equals to 0 as well. Now we're going to check this if statement, i is 0 and j is 0, so i plus j is equal to 0, and 0 is less than 4, that it's 4 minus 1, so 0 is less than 3. Yes, so we're going to print our empty space, that's why we're entering in this if statement, and we will be printing this white space, you can check here in the terminal. Then we're going to loop over again, and here as you can see, our j will change its value to 1 and our i didn't change its value, we're still in the first row. So i is 0 and j is 1, so 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 is less than height minus 1, that is 3. It's less than this, so we're gonna satisfy this if statement and we're gonna print another empty space. Then we're gonna loop over again and we're gonna change the value of j, so now j is equals to 2. 2 plus 0 is less than 3. Yes, so this if statement will be true, and we're gonna print this empty space. Then we're gonna loop over, and now our j will be equals to 3. Because here the limit to our loop is j less than height. Since height is 4, the number 3 will be our last iteration in here. So 3 plus 0 is less than height, that is 4 minus 1, that is 3. So here our if statement is 3 is less than 3. No, this if statement is not true, so we're going to the else and we're going to print the star. Now, since we finish our for loop, we're going to finish our first loop for the row. So now we're going to go to the next line. So if you take a look here in the terminal, now we're going to the next line. And now we're going to change the value of i to 1. Okay, so now i is equals to 1. We're going to do all the loop of j again, so j equals to 0, i equals to 1, and j equals to 0. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1, and 1 is less than 3, so this if statement is correct. We're going to loop over our j, and now we're changing the value of j to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 is less than 3, so we're going to satisfy this if statement, and we're going to print this empty space again. Now, we're gonna, our j has value 2, 
And we're gonna sum. 2 plus 1 is less than 3. No, because 2 plus 1 is 3. So we're going to the else and we're gonna print the hash. Now we're gonna do another iteration where j is equal to 3 and we're gonna check. 3 plus 1 is less than 3. No, 3 plus 1 is 4, so we're going to the else and we're gonna print the other hash. Then we're done with this loop and we're going to the next line doing this print backslash n, okay? Now we're gonna change the value of i to 2 and we're gonna do all the loop of j over again. And if we keep taking a look in here, we're gonna print the first empty space because 0 plus 2 is 2 and 2 is less than 3. In the next iteration, j will be equals to 1 and 1 plus 2 is 3 and 3 is not less than 3 anymore, so we're printing the hash and so on. So we can see here the pattern by just clicking in this, cur in this curved arrow. And this is pretty good because we can understand what each step of our code is doing. So this is how our code is read. Okay, and finally we're gonna do our last loop where i is equal to 3. And always in this condition, since i is equal to 3, we're never gonna reach this if statement. Because since i is equal to 3, even if we add 0, 3 is not less than 3. So we're always going to the else in this scenario and we're done with our code. So we can take a look in here that we finish our pattern, okay? This is it for this problem. If you have any question, please send here in the comment or you can join our free Discord community where you can connect with people from around the world and have your questions answered in there. If you enjoy this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. When you're learning code by yourself, you will face many challenges. You have no one to unblock you, lack of clear path from beginner to being job ready, lack of motivation, lack of community of learners to network with. By being part of our Discord community, you will be able to network with high quality students from around the world. Join our Discord community right now and take a huge step toward achieving your learning goals.